And so I said to him, are you really sure that's an appropriate use of a corkscrew? Oh, hi YouTube. Today I'm going to be investigating how to get an antenna wire up into the trees in the woods. I'm in the High Sheriff Woods today and this video is not the video I originally intended to film. Uh, originally I was going to look at a video about some radio operating and to do that I needed to get an antenna up into the trees. And then I come to, oh, I thought about it and I thought maybe you getting the antenna into the trees is the more interesting video. Quite a few things to look at here. I'm going to look at types of trees. I'm going to experiment with some different methods of getting the antenna into the trees. Uh, and I'd like to say I'm by no, by no means an expert on this. So let's see how I get on, see what works, see what doesn't work. You won't always have a choice of tree to get your antenna wire or antenna cord over. But uh, if you do have a choice, then um, coniferous trees like the ones behind me are probably the sort to, to avoid. When you're getting a cord over a tree, friction is going to be your problem. And with coniferous trees, you're going to have a huge amount of foliage uh, touching the cord as you try to ping the cord over the tree. So coniferous trees, probably not great. Deciduous trees, such as the oak tree behind me, have very clear limbs and it's going to make your job so much easier. It gives you something easy to aim for and also it's going to give you a lot less friction when you pull the cord over the limb. So if you have a choice, go for a deciduous tree. I'm not going to try and get the antenna wire itself over the tree. That's not a great idea. You don't really want the antenna wire touching the tree if possible. Try and keep it away from the, uh, the tree branches and foliage. So what I'm going to do is to try to get a cord over the tree. And I'm going to need a few things to do that. Uh, the first thing is I'm going to need a weight to throw. And I'm going to use a, a fishing weight here, uh, which will give me something to throw. And because I'm experimenting, I've also brought something else. Uh, this is actually a socket uh, from, a, from a socket set and uh, I can use that to increase the weight. So I can experiment with a couple of different weights there. Uh, the cord that I'm going to use, I'm going to use this uh, high-vis cord, um, which is from Soda Beams. Uh, it's a high-vis cord, it's quite nice and smooth, so it's going to slip through uh, quite easily. Um, I'm going to use a high-vis header uh, and then onto the head, onto the end of the header, I'm going to actually tie some uh, some stealth cord. So I've got some stealth cord here. Obviously, the reason for the the reason for the high vis header is it's going to be a, a easier to spot because once I've thrown this cord up into the tree, uh, it could be quite hard to spot. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to need is a, is a bag, and the purpose of the bag is that I'm going to actually put all the cord into the bag all loosely coiled so that when I actually throw the cord over the tree that it will come out nice and smoothly and not snag on anything. If I was just to lay it on the ground I'd be it would be a certain uh, uh, well, definitely going to have a disaster because it's going to snag on things on the ground and the cord's never going to get up into the tree. So you need something really nice and smooth to uh, throw it from. You could either use a bag or perhaps a, a ground sheet uh, which you can lay the cord on and obviously you want to lay the cord on so that the the first bit of cord that comes out is on the top uh, and it all uh, pays out really nice and smoothly. I've tied the fishing weight on uh, with a few half hitches. I've deliberately not left any sort of loop here because uh, any loop is asking for trouble with, for getting caught on branches. I've actually uh, put the fishing weight inside the uh, the socket uh, which will just give me a little bit of extra weight for throwing. I've attached the high vis uh, header to a uh, to the stealth cord uh, with a reef knot, uh, which has just been secured with a couple of half hitches. Knots in the cord are always a problem because they are the sorts of things that are likely to snag. Um, this may not be the best knot for you, uh, for doing this job. Tell me what knot you would use. Uh, another thing that I've done, which uh, is a little tip which is useful to uh, think about, is that I've tied the, the far end of the stealth cord onto the handle of the bag because there's nothing worse than throwing your cord up through the branches of a tree only to see the end of the cord disappear up into the tree.
that was a pretty useful exercise. I learnt that uh, using the uh, weight, uh, sort of uh, swinging it between your legs and back over your shoulders, uh, was by far the best way of getting a weight, uh, the weight over the tree. And I achieved heights of about just under 40 feet, which I was pretty happy with, and it was reasonably accurate. The weight itself probably is a bit on the light side. Uh, the weight that I used, I'll put the put the uh, the actual weight uh, on the screen here, but it's probably a little bit on the light side, and the line did rather drag in the tree, and I did have some troubles uh, removing it. I also discovered that uh, I needed work gloves to actually pull the line out of the tree sometimes. Fortunately, I had a pair of leather gloves with me, so that was not a problem, but that's something worth thinking about. Of course, there are many other ways of getting lines over trees. Uh, I, I was really looking at something I could do when I'm backpacking, but uh, the way that I've used in the past, which has been very successful, is to, be, is to use a, a slingshot or a catapult uh, and to have that attached to a fishing reel. Um, the fishing line itself is very low friction uh, and the whole, that whole system works extremely well and you can certainly get quite a bit higher with that sort of system. But uh, if you're just out in the woods for a day's operating, uh, the method that I've used today seems to work quite well. A slight disappointment was the, uh, the dog throwing uh, thing, the thing for throwing a dog's ball. I thought that might help a lot, but uh, didn't seem to work for me, but maybe that was just my technique. After all that exertion, I think it's time for a beer. And I've got a nice bottle of Old Crafty Hen, 6.5%. And I'd like to thank everybody who's subscribed to the channel and actually bought me a beer. That's really, really generous of you. So let's get that open and see what it tastes like. Mm. Very nice too, a dark malty beer. Very pleasant, so cheers. If you want to help the channel, uh, this channel to grow, then uh, please do consider giving the video a thumbs up and also subscribing to the channel. Both those things uh, help with the YouTube algorithm and it makes means that more people will actually get to see the channel. And if you really, really like the channel, then you may want to buy me a beer and there's a link in the video description below. So, whichever way, thanks for watching.